Lincoln Riley unpacked quite a bit in his press conference week 10 by week for Oklahoma. We're going to talk about something I thought that he thought he said was really enlightening. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's OU-related, college football-related, sports-related. We have a good time. And today, I want to talk about Lincoln Riley saying something I thought, well, was also sobering and true. And Bob Stoops had something to do with it. Well, let's just get it out there. Let's talk about it. Remember this. Every loss at OU is shocking. <laughs> Remember that. I mean, I, and yeah, Bob told me that the other day after. And he, I mean, he's right. I mean, that's. I mean, rarely do we ever play a game that we're not favored, and rarely, you know, do we ever play a game that, you know, that, you know, that that everybody in the world doesn't expect us to win. So, you know, that's they're all shocking. Trust me. All right. So nothing like a little bit of reason and logic to blow up everything we know and love about college football. Because the thing about college football that makes it different from every other sport is we distinguish winning and only winning, right? We don't really do this thing called losses. Matter of fact, in the NBA, if you lose 20 games in a season, you're consistently cited as one of the best teams in all of professional basketball. In baseball, if you lose 62 games, you still are considered one of the best teams in all of professional baseball, in the NFL. You can lose not 20, certainly not 60, but if you lose four or even five, you're still cited as one of the best teams in all of pro football. In college football, one loss can really ruin your season, depending on where your expectations are set, because expectations in college football are everything that we have. Our expectations identify for us who's a good win and who's a bad win. And you can have a conversation about, hey, are you valuing somebody's loss a little too often or are you valuing somebody's win? Case in point here, Minnesota has to go undefeated to get into the college football playoff because even if they lost to Penn State next weekend, but they beat Ohio State in, say, a Big Ten championship game, you're still probably not going to put them in over a one-loss Georgia, one-loss LSU, one-loss Alabama, one-loss Clemson, or even one-loss Oklahoma, depending on who you're talking to on any given day. But it's still just one loss because your schedule just happened to be sorry in some parts of it where we would like you to be good. As a matter of fact, this is the part where I get to say Indiana is the best team in all of the state of Indiana. They're 6-2 with losses to Ohio State and, yes, Michigan State, which, by the way, were ranked both times that they played them. So do you think that perhaps maybe you give a little bit more credit to Indiana? No, because we're talking about how quality their losses are, and I hate that. But at a place like Oklahoma, where you really can see your, your season go up in flames with one loss, certainly with two, it's interesting to hear Lincoln Riley have that perspective of, hey, he is 31-5 and five now, meaning he's won 31 games, he's lost all of five. He's been beaten by two unranked opponents, both the Big 12 teams. Iowa State surprised some people in 2017. Kansas State certainly is surprising some folks in 2019. And defenders of Kansas State will be like, cool, they went and beat up on Mississippi State. Are we going to forget they beat up on an SEC team? Yes, we're going to forget that they beat up on like the seventh best Power 5 team in the SEC. Maybe. But that's beside the point. I wanted to just talk about that in an instance because I also say, hey, Lincoln, you make the $6.6 .6 million so that, you know, or $6.4 million so that, you know, you don't suffer these kinds of losses. And even then, you're gonna. And the money is the money is what they'll tell me. But if it money is the money, then give it to me or give it to you or give it to whomever. Because, yeah, we're probably going to say the same thing. But the money that Lincoln Rise being paid is because he's made two college football playoffs in two seasons as a head coach because he has put back-to-back -back offenses on the field for which have been historic when we're talking about output, two Heisman Trophy winners, two number one overall draft picks. All of that doesn't go out the window because you lost to Kansas State, but also you have to remember that the reason that you have this job and the reason you wanted this job is because you want to go win championships. And Big 12 championships for a place like Oklahoma just ain't going to cut it. You're going to have to be the team that not only wins the Big 12 championship, but goes and wins a semifinal for which you've been selected to play in. And again, 
all this month, I'm probably going to continue to yell about or into next month how much I really don't like the process of selecting teams to be in a four-team playoff. And people will disagree with me saying that 16 teams is too many, one in six, one in eight, whatever. I find it interesting. Nobody ever says that they want 12. But what have you, they got 24 in the FCS, and they got automatic bids for each conference. I don't see a problem with that either. But again, the college football uh, the, the posse is going to come to my door and say, yo, RJ, you're watering it down because there are 130 teams. You can't play all 130 teams. No, but I am saying that just because you don't have a 10-win season doesn't mean that you should be disqualified for playing from a championship. Also doesn't mean that we should be able to award you a championship because I want a definitive winner in college football. And you'll tell me, yo, Alabama doesn't get anything out of playing a 8-4 and four team or 7-5 team. Be like, yeah, sure they do. They get what they would normally get, which is a free bowl game practice, which is what they want. Be like, they don't want to get them hurt. Well, they don't have to play that many games. Get rid of your non-conference schedule games that don't mean anything while keeping the ones that do. Nobody's stopping Georgia from scheduling Notre Dame. I would stop them from scheduling Murray State. Nobody's stopping Oklahoma from scheduling Illinois State in 2023 right but the, we, we would want to I would want them to continue to schedule Georgia like they are in 2023 gotta have both right now and I don't see a reason as to why Oklahoma should schedule an FCS team at all for those of you that missed that news Oklahoma has announced it well they didn't announce it FBS schedules reported it Illinois State is doing a one game travel tune up trip to Norman for the tune of $625,000 for this beatdown a week before Oklahoma is scheduled to host Georgia at Owen Field in 2023. Ought to be a really outstanding game. Hopefully Kirby Smart's still there. Hopefully Lincoln Riley's still there. Hopefully both teams are still very, very good at playing this game called college football. But I thought that was interesting. Another thing I thought was interesting that we'll probably talk about at a later date is Lincoln Riley saying, hey, Grant Calcaterra's still week to week. DeLaren Turner yell is fine. And Caleb Kelly has been cleared to play football, but Lincoln Riley did not say that he was ready to play football. He said there's a difference between being cleared and being ready to play. I would expect to see Caleb Kelly play some football later in the season when they know they take a full advantage of the four-game redshirt rule and probably get him coming back next year, and I think that's for the best. All right, that's it for me. Doses.